Hi, I'm Nancy with Icon Apprentice, and thanks for joining me again. Uh, we are about probably a little over halfway through with our Icon of uh, St. Francis. Here's the color reference copy, and we have two different icons going here on this one. I just couldn't make up my mind how I wanted to do this, so I just kind of threw this together. Uh, we're doing one with a little bit different background, a little bit different colored robe than this one but i kind of wanted to do both of them to give you an option it's a way for you to join me uh, in the creative process and deciding what you'd like to write into your icons and what you what you don't want to write into the icon as far as what we're doing on the actual panels this is a wooden panel this is a canvas backed panel so you can kind of see the difference um, so we're getting ready this time we're going to be putting our flesh color in we'll be doing another a second coat of the prussian blue on the book and finishing this part of the book the which would be the paper inside the book so flesh on the face flesh on the hands and uh, we'll go ahead and get started then as we always do by uh, saying uh, our prayers and offering up the prayer intentions that we intend to write into our icons at this time. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. We're going to be using our sun cure. And Son Cure, of course, is a paint that we mix up. It's not something that you buy. And I will be putting the uh, I will be putting the uh, uh, instructions on how to create Son Cure uh, in the description box. So look for that recipe. And it is uh, olive green and I believe gold oxide, but I'll double check that for you. And uh, we're just going to be putting that out here. I'm going to be using some uh, flow medium uh, to make this slide across here real well. We'll get some nice coverage going. It is going to take us several coats to get to the point where we would like to be for this color. And we are going to be covering all of the flesh. And we generally will do this in a couple of uh, three or four applications we just kind of have to look and see I can't tell you you're only going to need three coats or two coats or six coats it's going to depend on how you apply the paint how many coats of the sun cure we're going you're going to need so let's go ahead and get started and we are going to use the largest brush remember I always say first of all keep a brush handy for us to uh, take care of any mistakes if we go outside the lines we want to be able to have a damp brush and a paper towel to be able to come in and correct some of those mistakes and you can see like right there i kind of went out of lines on that color but i can take care of that it just pulls right up and uh, we're going to be using the largest brush and that's going to be a number six Get your brush damp. We will fill it with our sun cure. And then we will pick an, pick an icon and start spreading. We've got two of them to do. And we'll just go ahead and begin with the head. We'll work quickly as we go through. We want to try not to have a lot of lines. So we want this to be a smooth application as much as we can. And remember, if you do get lines that are coming through, we can always go back and we'll go a different direction the next time that we lay the paint down. Remember, too, we also want to work fairly quickly. And the reason why I say that is because it does start to dry. And the last thing that we want to do is go in and rework an area that's kind of damp but starting to dry because it is going to cause the paint to lift. 
and that's one of the things that we just kind of want to watch out for. Always use the largest brush that you possibly can for the area which you're painting. And sometimes that could be a number three. When you get down in here, I'm using the number six, but if you're more comfortable with the number three on the fingers, please go ahead and do that. I just always suggest that you try to use the largest brush that you have available. It gives you some uh, the ability to test yourself, to experiment, and to give yourself the opportunity um, to paint with larger brushes. I think you're going to find that you're going to like it a lot. A lot better than doing small strokes with a little brush. It just gives you, I think, more control and it gives you a nicer, smoother appearance to your paint. can see how quickly we can work through these. The paint goes on the canvas in a very different way than it does on the wooden panel. So depending on how you what you're painting on you're going to have some different results with your brush strokes the canvas the tooth of the canvas is really coming out on this and you know what, one of the things that I did not do and that I always suggest that you do when you use a stretch canvas like this is I generally recommend that you put two or three coats of gesso. Usually they come pre-gessoed, but I always recommend that you put another coat, two or three coats of gesso uh, on these canvases. I actually did not do that. And I'll tell you, it was my experiment. I wanted to see just exactly how different the application was going to be for the paint. So this was kind of for uh, a learning experience for myself to see how a non how a how a, how a canvas that I didn't add additional gesso would receive the paint and how it would look. It's all part of the process so that I can kind of come back and tell you, here's been my experience. So we're learning something together, which is a good thing. This is not quite dry, so I'm going to have to wait. Uh, like I said, we the last thing we want to do is go back in here and try to lift, uh, do, do anything on damp. You're going to lift that paint up. You're going to create a hole in that flesh color. So we'll let that dry. I think in the meantime, let's go in and we'll do some Prussian blue on the book.
clean my brush off, I'm just going to wipe that one little... I actually brought this in a little more and made that thumb a little bit smaller. It was pretty fat, so kind of made that a little bit smaller. And uh, actually, this part of the hand, I could also make just a tiny bit smaller, too. So I could go in here and have kind of a nice chisel point here. And hopefully my head's not in the way. Uh, let's make this a little bit... Just make that hand, that thumb. Yeah, I made that just a little bit smaller. And that's why I say don't don't really worry about mistakes. Here's another thing that happened too, and I'll have you look at this. I left a little tiny piece right in here. This actually is open, and if you look at your color reference copy, there should be a tiny bit of brown where his robe is. And I really kind of left that open as if it were part of his hand. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there and just fill that in. I'll fill it in with some brown. There we go. didn't take much. Got just a little touch right there. I'll go in and clean that off. And let's check and see if we are ready for another coat on the flesh. That looks pretty dry. So let's go in and we'll put our second coat on the flesh. So I decided, um, waiting for this to dry, and I wanted you to see the difference in how they, uh, the two icons take the color. This one is the stretched canvas, and you can tell, you know, how dark the flesh is. This has two coats. This has three, and this is the uh, board, our uh, panel, a wooden panel. So there is a difference in how dark uh, the colors, the pigments, take on a different surface. I am actually going to do the uh, pages of the book, and we're base coating that with Fawn.
Once the fawn is dry, you can come in here and look. We're going to be coming back in and we'll do um, some uh, unbleached titanium here and then we'll probably go a final highlight on this is going to be probably a warm white uh, and give it just the pages some highlights uh, we are going to be going in and we'll maybe reinstate some of these lines drawings here we'll be taking some Prussian blue and probably mixing a little bit of unbleached titanium with that to create our pattern on the book and we'll continue to work on our flesh as well this looks pretty dry I think we'll go in and put a third coat on this While the flesh is drying, I think I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put some of these uh, lighter blue colors on here. Let's take a little bit of unbleached titanium and mix with our Prussian blue. And remember, we, we get paint and we roll it as we pull. We roll it. We want to get a nice point. And then we'll come in and see where we have, use your color reference copy, see where we have the cross on the book.
the the crisscross lines inside we'll actually use a liner brush for that so that we can get some nice thin lines all right I think our flesh is dry I think we're gonna go back on this is three coats I think I'm gonna put four on here and this one is dry I think we'll put at least one more maybe two more coats on this one for the flesh I'm going to attempt to freehand this uh, decoration on the book we shall see how well I can do Doesn't look too bad and then we'll go in and put the little dots in the center All right, I think these are doing really well. Um, I like the books. They're coming along very nicely. I think the next thing that we will do is we'll come in and put our unbleached titanium. I think our flesh on both is dark enough. Um, I have this one little uh, spot in this one. I'm hoping that'll dry darker. Uh, we'll see what happens. We may go in and just do a little touch up. And I do know I need to get a little bit darker color right in through there. I'll get just a little bit on my liner brush. And we'll pull this dark color of the robe through there. 
and I think that'll do it for us there on the robe uh, between the fingers and we'll make sure we have the darker color here as well just so that we have that indication that the robe color is peeking through there. All right, I think we're probably ready to do the highlights then on the book next. And we'll take a look and see if we're done with the highlights on the robe. And we'll start then doing our flesh two, which will be our orange color and I think they're coming along quite nicely thanks for joining me I appreciate you being with me uh, stay tuned uh, hopefully the next couple of the next session we may be almost done and then I would like to show you how to seal and varnish our icons so this one these uh, this particular tutorial series I'll be showing you a follow-up on how to seal and protect uh, the painting that you've done thanks for joining me and I hope to see you next time bye bye